is the fourth round of the World Rapid Championships 2022. You see Magnus Carlsen coming to the board. But then he realizes that maybe he's a bit too early to the game. His opponent has not yet arrived. Oh, there he is. Nodirbek Abdu Satarov, the reigning rapid champion is there. And Magnus is talking to his good friend, Daniel Dubo. He likes to talk to him before his games. We can also see Vidit there in the background. And Magnus going to his board, the top board clash between the current classical champion and the current world rapid champion. When you look at Nodirbek, you see a boy, still a boy, he is 18 years old, filled with confidence, is not intimidated by the world champion. 15 minutes plus 10 second increment, off we go. Magnus begins with 1b3. Wow, this is the opening that he has been playing in this tournament. Slightly off beat. Presses the clock. Knight comes out to c6 for Nodirbek, defend, defending his e5 pawn. e3 played. Uh, this is how generally you develop. And Nodirbek taking his time because b3 is a slightly off beat opening. Although nowadays, People are coming prepared for it as, as well. Knight to f3. Now one more attack on the pawn. Generally, black pushes the pawn and white goes knight d4. But Nodirbek plays his bishop to d6. Now this is slightly awkward because it blocks your d pawn. But later what you do is you castle, put your rook on e8, pull your bishop back and then play d6 or d5. So short castle played. And Magnus now continues with a d3. Just improves his position. Rook e8. And another small little move a3. The idea is to somehow expand on the queen side with b4. And black nips that idea in the bud with a5. Stopping the b4 expansion. Magnus continues with his development. Bishop e2. And as discussed. The bishop drops back to f8, preparing the central break d5. Now, white castles. I think Nodirbek is going to play. Yes, he does. d5. cd5 played by Magnus. And now knight takes d5. Guys, we are in a reverse Sicilian situation. Generally, the position that white has is what black takes. And it's known as the hedgehog setup. Knight comes out to d2. You will see that white is limited to the first three ranks. F6 played while black has more space. But white can break through at the right time. Queen C2 on the board. Now let's just take a minute here and wind back the clock by 52 years. Yes, you heard it right. 1970s. This position was exactly played in the game between Fisher with white and Anderson with black. Anderson played bishop to e6. And guess what Fisher did here? The reason I'm showing you this game is because Magnus was highly inspired by this game against when he played against Nodirbek. The move that was played was not the normal rook c1 or rook d1 or rook e1 or knight e4 or knight c4. These are all normal standard moves. But Fisher came up with a completely new plan, king h1. And his idea is to put his rook on g1 and play g4, g5. This is how the game continued. Rook g1, rook d8, knight came up and now g4. And just he brought his rook up, he brought his other rook in, brought his knight to c5, other knight came into f5 and before you knew it, white had a huge attack. So once you have the background of this idea, as to that in such a position you can go king h1, rook g1, g4. Let's go back to our game. Well, what does Nodirbek do? Is he going to continue like Anderson with bishop e6? No, he goes bishop f5. And notice you can't play e4 because knight f4 attacks the bishop on e2. So for now bishop f5 does stop e4 and now bishop g6 played. You can see Magnus thinks for a bit and goes for g4 in the footsteps of Bobby Fischer. He thinks that, look, I don't need to play king h1, rook g1 with the idea of g4. I can get it directly. Now Nodirbek attacks the pawn. Here, do you play h3? Not really. Magnus goes king h1. 
and he's telling Nadir Beck, if you come and take this pawn, I'll take here and give a discovered attack to your queen, which is not a good thing for black. So for now, Magnus has got this move g4 without even playing rook g1. Is that a small improvement? Well, perhaps. For now, Magnus brings out his knight to e4. We, we noticed in the game of Fischer versus Anderson that white built up a huge attack by bringing his rook to g1, g3 and the other rook to g1. Will Magnus continue that way? What is Nadir Beck's plan? For now, Magnus is keeping his cards open. But it's kind of funny that he's already played g4 and he's not going ahead with the rook g1 plan. Bishop f7 played by Nadir Beck and now Magnus brings his rook to g1, knight d6. Look at this. These pieces are now angling at the queen side. Magnus goes rook g3. Well, <laughs> the trademark Fisher stuff. But now, Nadir Beck is not playing like Anderson. He goes a4 and he chips away at the queen side. One very important variation is that b4 is met with bishop b3. So that's the reason why Magnus takes the pawn. But now knight a5. This is hanging. Bishop is threatening here. So all of a sudden, even before Magnus can get kingside play, Nadir Beck has created a lot of inroads on the queen side. Now, not a good move, bishop d5. The best move was to take this pawn. But Nadir Beck plays his bishop to d5, which is not the best idea. Now, Magnus can actually push his pawn on g5 and that's what he does. Magnus realizes, oh, f5, that he can actually attack. And now look at this variation. You can go knight f6. Sacrifice your knight, take, take and open up your rook. That would have been amazing. But instead, Magnus goes knight c3 back, which is also okay, not, but not the best. Bishop c6 and he plays his pawn up to e4. Now, Nadir Beck picks up the pawn on a4 and he's say, telling Magnus that, look, if I get rid of your bishop on b2, that would be not good news for you because that's an important bishop. So, Magnus takes the knight. And now Nadir Beck must recapture. He takes it. And now Queen C3 attacks the knight on A5. Of course, you can't give up that knight. So the knight has to reroute itself. But it's such a mess. You have a backward pawn here. You have a weak square here. Who's better? Well, Magnus says, who cares about weaknesses? I'm going at your king. He goes G6. Knight D4 attacking the bishop on E2. What does Magnus do now? Does he save his bishop, bishop f1? But then black goes at 6. Well, the best move is knight g5 and he finds it. Wow, what a move. And the point here is that after knight takes e2, he wants to sacrifice a piece. Knight f7 check, queen f7, there was a better move there. Knight c3 instead of knight f7, queen c4 was better. But now Magnus is <laughs> making a queen on the board. Who's winning? It's so chaotic. Bishop takes e8. Well, rook takes e8 was much better there. But bishop takes e8. Now bishop c3. And bishop came out to g6. We'll analyze this position a bit more in depth after the game. But all of a sudden, what we have reached here is a position where white is an exchange up. But black has a pawn for it. But now he takes the pawn and g7 is under pressure. You must go to d7 and defend it. It's very important here to defend that pawn. But instead, he takes on d3. That's a huge blunder. But Magnus has to find this rook takes g7 move. Because rook takes g7. Bishop takes g7. Bishop takes g7. Check. King g8. Bishop f6. Discovered check and you win the rook. That's the plan. And you can see Magnus has seen the winning idea. He takes his rook. Chops on g7. Nadir Beck is lost. The game is over. The Uzbek Grandmaster generally, who is very, very confident. At this point, you can see him. He knows that the writing is on the wall. He has lost this game. It's not even easy to find a move here. Nadir Beck looks at Magnus. He knows that he's lost this game. Shakes his head. These are little gestures from which you can understand that it's all over. Shakes his hand. Magnus Carlsen gets the win. He has his revenge. He's beaten Nadir Beck. He lost to him in 2021. But now, what a sweet revenge this was.
two games which I want to talk about, which were my favorite. One in Rapid, one in Blitz. The Nordirbeck game, where you went G4. Uh, I'm sure you know the game of Fisher. Uh, did it pass your head at some point, Fisher Anderson, when you did this? Actually, I was reading uh, a book by John Donaldson about Bobby Fisher. Uh, just in the days leading up to this tournament, so that was uh, that was a massive inspiration. Yeah, um, I was thinking during the game that because I had the feeling that the position was like very very similar. Uh, no, his bishop went to f5 g6, yeah, which is slightly like different. Uh, that, different. I know that Anderson put the bishop on e6, but before that, I was like, wow, this is almost exactly the same. <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, when he puts his bishop on g6 at first, uh, I was thinking, ha, now I get g4 without even going uh, rook g1. But then I started to, to see, like, these knight b4 sacrifices are extremely yes. dangerous. Also, a4, like, b4. a4, b4. Uh, I was thinking, like, the books, this book and other books sort of made it seem like Fisher was much better after, after this, and I didn't see that at all. Um, also in the game, you know, a skirmish, random things happen, but it was, but it was a fun game. G six knight G five was amazing. I, I was just, uh, I'm disappointed that I didn't see queen C four, rookie seven G H. This is what I missed. I didn't. I, I thought about rookie seven, but I somehow the move G H escaped my mind. This is disappointing because in the other line, uh, when I went go knight F seven, it was king G eight. Uh, Queen c4, if queen e6 or rook e6, then g8, 7 is the key move. So I saw the theme just not in the in that line. So uh, fortunately, I know I won afterwards. But if if I hadn't won the game, I would have uh, um, I would have um, yeah, that would have been a disappointing miss. Because otherwise, it would would have been uh, an even better game. is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. And your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective. Thank <laughs> you.